The NIGMS Human Genetic Cell Repository at the Coriel Institute for Medical Research was established in 1972 to serve as a central source of well-characterized samples to help further research and invest in the future of potential therapies for human genetic diseases and chromosomal abnormalities. The NIGMS repository contains over 10,600 samples, representing over 500 different genetic diseases and chromosomal abnormalities. These samples have been used by scientists in over 50 countries and have been utilized in over 5,500 scientific publications. The repository collects blood and skin samples from people who have genetic diseases or chromosomal abnormalities and makes cell lines and DNA from them. The repository also collects and links medical and genetic information about the donor to these samples. The cell lines and DNA, as well as the medical and genetic information about the sample donors, are then made available to scientists from all over the world to use in research. Samples come to the repository from a variety of sources, from research scientists, patient advocacy groups, and from patients and families directly. The NIGMS repository is located at the Coriel Institute for Medical Research in Camden, New Jersey. The Coriel Institute for Medical Research is an independent nonprofit research organization dedicated to understanding human genetic diseases and providing the highest quality genetic resources. Coriel's Biobank manages the world's most diverse collection of cell lines, DNA, and other biomaterials gathered and distributed for use by the international biomedical research community. Coriel also has the capability to make induced pluripotent stem cells, a type of man-made stem cell that shows great promise for use in drug and therapy development. Induced pluripotent stem cells are man-made embryonic-like stem cells that are made by taking human skin cells and using viral vectors to reprogram the cells back to an embryonic, undifferentiated, or blank slate state. The blank slate iPS cells can be directed to develop into any cell type, for example, nerve cells, so that scientists can test how well a drug or therapy may work on those cells. Using iPS cells can allow scientists easier access to difficult to obtain target tissues. Using iPS cells, scientists can make unlimited quantities of affected nerve cells to study from a single skin biopsy. Having the ability to make unlimited quantities of iPS cells is also helpful for transplant-based therapies or to test the effects of several new candidate drugs. iPS cells may allow for a better disease model since we know that animal models don't always overlap human physiology. Using iPS cells, a scientist can test the effect of a candidate drug directly on the target molecule, like a human muscle or nerve cell. Another potential advantage of iPS technology is that it may make recruiting enough physicians and research subjects to conduct clinical trials easier if the drug or therapy has been developed with the best possible model. IPS technology may help advance drug and therapy development. The better the quality of drug and therapy development testing, the more likely the drug or therapy is to win the approval of the FDA, support from insurance companies, and the interest of potential manufacturers and distributors. In order for genetic diseases and chromosomal abnormalities to benefit from exciting technologies like induced pluripotent stem cells, we need your help. Individuals with a genetic disease or chromosomal abnormality are eligible to donate either a blood or skin biopsy sample. Biopsy samples are currently the preferred sample type for making iPS cells. However, scientists have recently been successful in creating iPS cells from blood and it is expected that this approach will continue to be developed since blood samples are much easier to obtain. Interested sample donors can request a sample collection kit which will contain the sample collection tubes and required paperwork. Each sample donor must sign an informed consent form. Donors or their healthcare providers must complete 14 questions on the NIGMS sample submission form. This form collects general information like age, gender, affected status, race, ethnicity, and family history. A healthcare provider must complete the clinical data elements form, which captures more detailed information about the symptoms and behaviors and the testing done to make the diagnosis. 
This form can be submitted separately via email, mail, or fax if necessary. Submitting copies of relevant medical records and genetic test results is also highly encouraged as the more clinical information we have on a sample donor, the more useful the sample is to scientists. It is free to donate a sample to the NIGMS repository. Coriel pays for the shipping of the collection kit both ways and can reimburse you up to $40 for the cost of having a blood draw. Most donors are able to have their blood samples collected during a scheduled doctor's visit. Biopsy samples are a little more difficult to obtain and we are not able to reimburse for any costs associated with the biopsy. We recommend that biopsies be collected during a planned surgical procedure. For skin biopsy collection, a doctor will numb the area and then use a special circular blade to remove a quarter inch piece of skin. The biopsy can be taken from anywhere. The back of the upper arm or back of the thigh are common sites. A doctor will place the biopsy tissue into the collection tube provided in the kit, seal the tube, and repackage it for shipment back to Coriel. Samples should not be collected on a Friday because Coriel is not able to receive samples over the weekend. Biopsy samples should be shipped immediately. They can be refrigerated until the time of shipment, but do not enclose dry ice or ice packs with the sample. A prepaid FedEx air bill is included in the kit to ship the sample back to Coriel via overnight delivery. Like any medical procedure, there are risks. The risks of having a skin biopsy include mild local pain, some bleeding, possibility of a small scar, and a slight possibility of infection. For blood collection, a phlebotomist will use a tourniquet to apply pressure to your arm and the area where the needle is to be inserted is disinfected. The needle is inserted into the vein and blood is drawn into the collection tubes provided in the kit. Blood samples can also be collected from an IV during a hospitalization. The blood must be kept at room temperature and shipped back to Coriel immediately following collection using the prepaid FedEx air bill enclosed in the kit. Samples should not be collected on a Friday because Coriel is not able to receive samples over the weekend. The risks of having a blood draw are minimal and include minor transient pain, slight possibility of infection, fainting or lightheadedness, and possible bruising. Coriol scientists will make cell lines and DNA from the blood and tissue samples. A cell line is a population of constantly dividing cells. DNA is a molecule that encodes the instructions for the growth, development, and functioning of the body's cells and organs. The cells are placed in glass ampules and are then stored in liquid nitrogen tanks at minus 316 degrees Fahrenheit. DNA is stored at minus 80 degrees Celsius in large freezers. The cell lines and de-identified medical information about the donor are made available to researchers around the world through an online catalog. You can think of this as the Amazon.com for scientists. All names and potentially identifying information are removed from the sample and its associated medical information and are replaced with a catalog ID number or item number. Scientists can shop for cell lines and DNA samples and read product descriptions that tell them more details about the sample donor, like the age of onset, gender, race ethnicity, symptoms, developmental milestones, family history, and results of genetic or other diagnostic testing. Samples donated to the NIGMS repository can be used for a variety of purposes, including the development of therapies, discovery of disease genes and their function, further study of known genes or gene expression, and the development of new genetic tests. Sample donors will not receive results of any testing performed on their sample or on materials generated from their sample. The NIGMS repository is not directly involved in the research that is performed using the samples, but is rather the step before the research, in that we make and distribute the materials that the scientists use. Coriel does try to keep track of how samples in the repository are used. We review the published literature every month and link any publications referencing repository samples to the sample description. This way, we can tell sample donors how the group of samples from individuals with a given genetic disease or chromosomal abnormality have been used and what has been learned using samples from the NIGMS repository. For more information about the NIGMS repository, please contact Tyrus Midland, Genetic Counselor for the NIGMS repository at 856-757-4822 or via email at the address shown. Thank you for your interest in learning more about the NIGMS repository at Coriel.